Welcome to the second last video of this artifact appearance series. This is both exciting and a little bit sad. This series has been a journey for me in my introduction to YouTube and video editing in general. Thank you all for joining me this far. Today we're talking about monks. Monk is a hybrid class introduced in Mists of Pandaria. Like paladins, monks have three specs, one for each role. Brewmaster monks are tanks, Windwalker monks are damage dealers, and Mistweaver monks are healers. As always, I'll go into more detail on how to get each appearance in the class spec I present first, whereas the rest will be a bit simpler. Should you be skipping the first part, I recommend going back to the first spec and its artifact appearance equivalent if you're in doubt about something in the latter two parts. If that doesn't provide the answer, you're more than welcome to leave a question in the comment section below. I'll begin the guide today with a tank spec, Brewmaster. Brewmaster monks got the staff of Husan, the Wanderer's Companion, as their artifact weapon in the Legion expansion. The story of the staff passes all the way back to the titanic watcher Freya, who used it as a walking stick while populating Azeroth before passing it to the Jade Serpent. The artifact book describes it as follows. Long ago, Keeper Freya sculpted an ethereal plane of existence, the Emerald Dream, to act as a guide for Azeroth's natural life. She crafted and planted one tree near the powerful energies of the Vale of Eternal Blossoms. It grew strong and tall, drinking deeply from the Vale's resonant power. More trees arose around it. Lush forests, both in the dream and in the waking world, sprang to life across the region. Keeper Freya named the tree Fusan and shaped one of its branches into a walking stick for her long journeys. From the beginning, this staff has accompanied legendary creatures and immortal spirits as they carried out important, lasting work all across Azeroth. It also fell into the possession of the Monkey King. That came later. You first acquire Husan, the Wanderer's Companion, in its base green tint when you begin your class or campaign as a monk and choose to pursue this artifact weapon. Afterwards, you unlock the blue tint when you obtain one of the Pillars of Creation and bring it to your class or. Each pillar is given to you when you complete the entire questline in one of the Broken Isle zones. The Ages of Agrimar from Stormheim, the Hammer of Kasgoth from High Mountain, the Tears of Elune from Valjara, the Tidestone of Golganeth from Azuna, or the Eye of Amonsul from Surmar. The Red Tint is a reward for recovering the Light's Hut and bringing it to your class hall. To do this, you must talk to Katgar in Dalaran, here, and he will give you the quest A Falling Star, which you must complete the questline of. Lastly, the Golden Tint of Husan will be unlocked once you complete the first major campaign in your class hall. This is relatively early after you begin the campaign. The Monkey King's Burden is the second artifact appearance you can unlock for Fusan, and it is tied to the completion of your class or campaign. The green and blue tints are both unlocked once you complete your entire class or campaign with the achievement Forge for Battle. The red tint is automatically unlocked once you read level 50 on your monk character, and the golden tint is unlocked with the completion of the lengthy archaeology achievement This Side Up. This achievement is account wide, however, so you only need to do it on one character. This side up requires you to complete 8 rare archaeology projects around the Broken Isle zones. Each project is on a 2 week rotation and can be picked up from your archaeology trainer in Dalaran. Completion of the Balance of Power questline for Brewmaster Monks unlocks the Heart of the Ox weapon appearance. This questline is infamous for being tedious, and it doesn't help that it is not account-wide. That said, I recommend doing it if you want some awesome weapon appearances across most classes. I've put a link to the questline in the description below. First off, getting the achievement Improving on History at the end of the Balance of Power questline unlocks the golden tint of Heart of the Ox. After achieving this, you can unlock the other three tints. The blue tint is unlocked once you kill 8 world bosses around the Broken Isle zones for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The red tint is a reward for completing and timing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon in the current season. Right now, that's Shadowlands Season 1 dungeon. And the green tint is unlocked once you complete the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which requires a list of Legion dungeon achievements. 
The PvP artifact appearance of Brewmaster Monks is Dragonfire's Grasp. I really like the look of this stuff. Each tint is unlocked when reaching a certain honor level. Remember that honor levels are account wide, so you don't necessarily have to do PvP on your Brewmaster Monk. The golden tint of Dragonfire's Grasp is unlocked at honor level 10. At honor level 30, you unlock the blue tint. The green tint is a reward for reaching honor level 50. And lastly, the yellow tint will be unlocked once you hit on a level 80. Bearer of the Mist is associated with the Mage Tower challenge for Brewmaster Monks. Which means, if you did the challenge back in Legion, you'd have unlocked the base blue tint of Bearer of the Mist. Unfortunately, the Mage Tower is unlocked and today, the weapon appearance associated with it is not obtainable. The other three tints of the artifact appearance can thus only be unlocked today if you already have the base tint. To do so, you must do the following. For the golden tint, you must complete 10 different Legion dungeons. This can be done by yourself or in a group, on any difficulty of your choosing. The red tint is unlocked when you win 10 rated battlegrounds. And by defeating Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty, you unlock the green tint of Bearer of the Mist. The hidden artifact appearance for Brewmaster Monks is Ancient Brewkeeper. A very befitting name and appearance, if you ask me. Of course, it's a brew keg on a stick. To unlock this appearance, you must get the item Legend of the Monkey King. And this is really very simple. You must unlock the Brew House, which is a tier 2 ability in your monk class hall. Researching it costs 500 order resources, so make sure you have this on hand. Brew House will give you access to the keg inside Stormstout Inn once a day, and clicking the keg will give you an item. And one of those items has a chance to be the Legend of the Monkey King. Once you get the item, you unlock Ancient Brewkeeper in its base red tint. Afterwards, you can unlock the green tint by completing 30 Legion dungeons. Like previously, you can choose to do this on your own or in a group, and the dungeon difficulty doesn't matter. Completing 200 world quests anywhere between Legion and Shadowlands will unlock the blue tint of Ancient Brewkeeper. And lastly, the brown tint will be unlocked once you kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Windwalkers are the damage dealing spec of the monk class and get a twin set of fist weapons named Fists of the Heavens as their artifact weapon. I love the look of these, and the story of their creation is quite amusing. Thousands of years ago, the famed Tolvia smith Yamat crafted a pair of magnificent hand blades. Unsatisfied with his work, Yamat tried to capture the essence of Alakir the Windlord to infuse into his blades. Alakir was not amused. Despite the smith, Alakir poured unspeakable amounts of raw elemental fury into the hand blades. When Yamat attempted to unleash their might, a great vortex sprang up, engulfed his city and scattered the weapons to the winds. What I also really like about this artifact weapon is that each appearance that you unlock is quite distinct from the former, offering what almost looks like different weapons altogether. To begin with, you unlock the base blue tint of Fists of the Heavens when you choose to pursue the artifact weapon in the beginning of your class hall campaign in Legion. Those of you who haven't done the class hall campaigns before, all you need to do to begin is to get to Dalaran, in Chromian time or not, depending on your level, and you should soon be pursued by a monk who asks you to please stop and listen to what he has to say. Try running away for a bit, it's fun. After unlocking the base appearance, you can unlock the green tint by recovering one of the pillars of creation from the broken isle zones. The red tint will be unlocked once you recover Light's Hut and bring it to your class hall. And the golden tint is a reward for completing the first major campaign in your monk class hall. Alakia Touch is a nice reference to the story of the artifact weapon and is unlocked in its golden and green tint once you complete your entire monk class hall campaign with the achievement Forge for Basil. The red tint is unlocked once your monk character reaches level 50, and the blue tint is unlocked with the archaeology achievement This Side Up. Spirit's Reach makes Fists of the Heavens look more like blades, and the appearance is associated with the Balance of Power questline. When you get the achievement improving on history at the end of Balance of Power, you unlock the base turquoise tint of Spirit's Reach. After that, you can unlock the red tint by killing 8 world bosses in the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. 
The pale purple tint is a reward for completing a 15 plus mythic keystone dungeon in the current season, after completing Balance of Power, and the green tint will be unlocked once you complete the achievement Glory of a Legion Hero. Shadowpan Legacy is both awesome in name and in appearance. I want this. The weapon appearance is unlocked through PvP, with each tint being unlocked when you reach a certain honor level. At honor level 10, you unlock the red tint of Shadowpan Legacy. The green tint is a reward for reaching honor level 30. At honor level 50, you are rewarded with a blue tint. And at honor level 80, you unlock the pale gold tint of Shadowpan Legacy. Suen's Enforcer looks super neat and is therefore, of course, unlocked through the Mage Tower Challenge in Legion. The challenge was a feat of strength and is thus no longer doable. Why is all the good ones locked now? However, if you did complete the challenge back in Legion and unlock the base turquoise tint of Suen's Enforcer, you can still today unlock the other tints. By doing 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty, you unlock the golden tint. The ice blue tint is unlocked by winning 10 rated battlegrounds after obtaining Suen's Enforcer, and the red tint is given to you once you defeat Kill Jaden on heroic difficulty. Storm Fist is the hidden artifact fist, I mean appearance, that you unlock as a Windwalker monk. To unlock it in its base blue tint, you must acquire the item the Storm Fist. The Storm Fist has a 0.3% chance to drop from glimmering treasure chests which you get through the Withered Army training scenario in Suramar. The chance is way too low in my opinion, but unfortunately some of these hidden artifact appearances are very RNG based. The Withered Army training is a scenario you unlock through the Suramar questline, and in it you get sent on training missions with your Withered Army. You're introduced to it in the questline once you reach the Building an Army quest. With each training scenario you need 400 ancient mana and you can do the sessions approximately every third day. After obtaining the Stormfist item, you unlock Stormfist in its base blue tint. Afterwards, you can unlock the green tint by completing 30 Legion dungeons. The red tint is given to you once you complete 200 world quests anywhere between Legion and Shadowlands. And lastly, the pale gold tint of Stormfist is unlocked once you kill a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction. Mistweaver monks are the healers of the monk class, and this was actually the first healing class I ever played. I love the aesthetics and the turquoise colors of Mistweaver's spells. It's a very elegant class, I think. As such, it is rather appropriate that Mistweavers also get the elegant artifact weapon Shailun Staff of the Mists. This very special staff was used by the last emperor of Pandaria, Emperor Shaohao, to shroud the land in mists to protect it from the Legion, which was prophesied to invade and destroy all of Azeroth. Do you know of Shaohao, of Kang, the Fist of First Dawn, of Suen, the White Tiger? Do you know of the terrible trials the Pandaren people overcame thousands of years ago? Shailun is living proof that conflict can be endured, that tyranny can be overcome, that disaster can be averted, and that a caring heart can make it all possible. Shailun will aid you greatly in the tribulations to come. Carry it with pride and use it to bring your comrades home alive. Definitely very befitting of a healing spec. As with the Windwalker artifact weapon, Shailun's various appearances are quite distinct and each very much worthy of collection. You unlock the base blue tint of Shailun's Staff of the Mists when you begin your class war campaign in Legion and choose to pursue this artifact weapon. The turquoise tint will be unlocked once you recover one of the Pillars of Creation and bring it to your monk class hall. By recovering Light's Heart and bringing that too to your class hall rewards you with the red tint of Shailun. And by completing the first major campaign out of several, in your monk class hall you unlock the golden tint of this artifact appearance. Toll of the Deep Mist is the second artifact appearance associated with Shailun. You unlock both the green and blue tints of Toll of the Deep Mist by completing your entire Monk Class Hall campaign with the achievement Forge for Battle. The red tint will automatically be unlocked once you reach level 50 on your monk character. And by completing the archaeology achievement This Side Up, you unlock the golden tint of Toll of the Deep Mist. Remember that this achievement is account wide. The Improving on History achievement by the end of the Balance of Power questline rewards Mistweaver monks with the Chi-Gi's Spirit Artifact appearance in its base red tint. 
After completing the Balance of Power quest line, you unlock the green tint by killing 8 world bosses in the Broken Isles for the Unleashed Monstrosities achievement. The Pale Red tint is a reward for completing and timing a 15 plus Mythic Keystone Dungeon in the current season, now that being Shadowlands Season 1. And by earning the achievement Glory of the Legion Hero, which requires a list of Legion Dungeon achievements, you unlock the blue tint of Chi-Chi's Spirit. Shah's Torment looks amazing. And for a short moment there, I feared that this artifact appearance was tied to the Mage Tower challenge, because it's so cool. But no, Shah's Torment is unlocked with PvP honor levels. The base greenish tint is unlocked at honor level 10. The brown tint is a reward for reaching honor level 30. At honor level 50, you unlock the beautiful purple tint. And the indigo tint is a reward for reaching honor level 80. The artifact appearance which is unlocked with the Mage Tower challenge is Essence of Calm. As I keep mentioning, this challenge is no longer doable as it was locked with the launch of BFA. So to those who did not complete it before then, all four tints of Essence of Calm are unobtainable. However, if you did complete the Mage Tower back in Legion on your Mistweaver Monk, you would have unlocked the base blue tint and can still today unlock the three other colors. The silver tint is unlocked by completing 10 different Legion dungeons on any difficulty after completing the Mage Tower challenge. The golden tint is a reward for winning 10 Raced Battlegrounds. And the green tint will be unlocked once you defeat Kill Jaden on Heroic difficulty, if you already have Essence of Calm unlocked in its base tint. The hidden artifact appearance for Shailun is Breath of the Undying Serpent. Honestly, some of these weapon names are genius and just super cool. You can unlock this hidden appearance by acquiring the item Breath of the Undying Serpent. This item simply has a chance to drop from Isandra in the Emerald Nightmare Raid in the Dragons of Nightmare Encounter. You do not need to be in Mistweaver spec for this to have a chance to drop, however the drop rate is very low at 0.6%. After obtaining Breath of the Undying Serpent, you unlock the hidden artifact appearance in Space Green Tint. Afterwards, you can unlock the turquoise tint by completing 30 Legion dungeons. You can do this on any difficulty, by yourself or in a group. By completing 200 world quests anywhere between Legion and Shadowlands, you unlock the dark blue tint. And lastly, after killing a thousand enemy players of the opposite faction, you unlock the golden tint of Breath of the Undying Serpent. And that's a wrap! Getting so very close to the end of the Artifact Appearance series here, I'll use this opportunity to ask you if there's anything you'd like me to make a guide of or anything you're curious about in WoW. If there is anything, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for getting to the end of this video for sticking around this far. Thank you and welcome to new subscribers to my channel. I realize many of you might have gotten here due to the recent Demon Hunter video. What in particular drew you to that? I'm quite curious since some classes seem to draw a much wider audience than others. Next week will be the very last video of this series, and we'll be ending with a blast, because I'm tackling druids, and druids have 4 specs and thus 96 different artifact appearances and tints. Whew, I better get to work. Till next time, take care and thank you very much for watching.